Instructional Designers in Offices Drinking Coffee is brought to you by Domino, makers of Domino One, the all-in-one cloud-based e-learning authoring tool for teams. You can learn more at domino.com. Now, here's this week's episode. Bass players out there grooving to the bass line, that walking bass on a Wednesday morning. Hi, yes. Oh, the walking bass. It's better than the running bass. Now that's baseball talk, hey. <laughs> hey. Oh, zingers. <laughs> zingers this early in the morning. Dad jokes forever. Hey. <laughs> oh, goodness. Bring them on. Bring them on. Are we getting weather uh, reports? Yeah. Looks like we are. <laughs> yeah. All yep, right. Yep. Yeah. For uh, my fellow Canucks here, the uh, the central region of Canada, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, is probably going to get hammered with uh, a big, big snowfall, or is in the process of getting hammered. Um, in, in, here in Canada, we're a big country, so when one area is going to get really, really pummeled, and it makes like the newscasts in all of the other areas, you know that that's going to be a really big snowstorm or a, a really big uh, hurricane hitting land or something. So, so my my sympathies go out to the folks uh, who might be having to endure that uh, foot and a half of snow over the next couple of days. So, mm. indeed, ah. indeed. Well, it's. Uh... It's Web3 Wednesday, everybody. Ooh. Web we have a guest today, Chris. Thing, eh? Who's hanging out <laughs> with us today, Chris? Friends, we have Myra Rolden back with us. Myra's been with us several times, but there might be a few folks in our crowd uh, here today who haven't met you yet. So, Myra, give us a, a brief introduction to yourself. Yeah, let's do uh, I will do, try to do my elevator pitch. Uh, <laughs> hi, friends. I'm Myra Roldan. <laughs> I am a senior technical program manager at Amazon, um, and I do big things. Like I don't even I, I putz around a lot. I, <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, guys. I focus on emerging technology, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And awesome. um, last time you were with us, we were talking about um, uh, like an e-learning game that you were building to help people understand blockchain better. Um, yes. And, and that sort of leads into what we're talking about today, because blockchain is one of those technologies, one of those ideas, concepts, etc., that people are, are collectively calling Web 3, 3, 3. I don't know. It feels like that With needs the some echoes, emphasis. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to talk a bit more about Web 3 uh, today, because one of the things I, you know, we, we have in L&D, although we're Lots of us are tech savvy, et cetera. Sometimes it feels like the you know things that are capturing the rest of the world take a while to to move into our world. And uh, um, to be honest, I haven't. I mean, I I know things like the blockchain and and, and different you know mm -hmm. uh, portions by by word recognition and have a bit of an idea on those sorts of things. But I haven't even begun thinking about how those are going to start working their way into our L and D world yet. So, um, and that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna get on about today. Yeah. We are, so where, we are. Where do we start? Let's, where do let's you want start to with, start? I, I think maybe we should start with just some of the, the basics. Like what are some of the terms flying around that kind of fall under that umbrella of Web3? Okay. Um, so I think right. we should, I think we should really start at the beginning though. Okay. Okay. Um, let's do that. So let's, yeah. Instead of jumping into like this, let's, let's talk about Darwinism and the evolution of the internet. Okay, just remember, right. we only have about right. 45 yeah, yeah. minutes. I know. So. I, got the, I, <laughs> <laughs> I got you in three clips. Ready? All right. Awesome. So Web 1, um, you guys and I are old enough to remember the, the beginnings of Web, of Internet, right? Um, and we used to have, like, Usenet groups where you had to, like, dial in. As long as you had an Internet connection, you can access a page, a group. Um, and it was usually dial-up. Yeah. Um, there was no um, like surfing the web at that time with Web One. It was like Usenet groups. There were some wikis. There were some pages that were maintained by individuals, right? So that was Web One. 
Web one evolved into what we now have today, which is web two. And you guys might have, there was a whole time where there was this like whole web two thing. So web two is just basically <laughs> the onslaught of user created, user generated content that's centralized. So think of like Facebook, Twitter, um, Google, um, TikTok, my favorite now, LinkedIn, right? <laughs> These are centralized platforms. Um, and you're not really the owner of your content. Like once your, your content's out there, anyone can grab your content. Um, and power ownership really belongs to just a handful of companies. Um, so Web3 um, is kind of the best of both worlds um, because it is our first term, decentralized, right? And open. Um, so you can uh, browse, create, so browse and create. So browse web one, create web two. Web three is you can own your content. Um, and so that's my quick kind of history of internet. How do you like that? <laughs> Woo, we're there. Uh, and we've got good. 40 minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks everybody. Where's the music Yeah, we're button? done. Here we go. Okay, so I have so I have so I have a, a good analogy for you guys too. So um because there's like if you look on the internet for like definitions of like web what is web three i'm going to give you a, a, a definition from uh let's see uh tech target so it's the third generation of internet services for websites and applications that will focus on using machine-based understanding of data to provide data-driven and semantic web what the hell does that mean like, <laughs> that's a lot of words <laughs> That feels like uh, they, they put a bunch of buzzwords into a jar and then just spilled them on the table. And, and said, oh, that's how it feels, is it? Right? Yeah, is it exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but I have an analogy for you guys. And I read this, I just, I did not come up with this analogy. Um, so uh, think of the internet as Iron Man. Blockchain is Captain America. NFTs, non-fungible tokens, are Thor, and decentralized applications are the Hulk. So Web3 is the Avengers. <laughs> so they're individual components that together and put together create like this, um, something that's fundamentally new and better, right? So alone, right, these things are interesting and useful but when you put them together they kind of form what we would call web three mm -hmm. um and it's just uh, a collection of like superheroes <laughs> that brought together are going to uh, defeat you know the unprecedented you know threat to humanity which is like <laughs> data ownership right <laughs> we, we're going to start to own our own data so yeah, this I like that because I, I think the thing that really kind of turned me around to wanting to have this conversation was um, hearing people start to refer to, because I've heard about the decentralized web for a really, really long time and federation and mm -hmm. and terms like that. But I never really connect because Bitcoin has gotten so much, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency have gotten so much uh, play uh, in the conversation that I thought when people were talking about Web3, I thought they were just talking about that. And the first time I saw people bundling in the decentralized web and all of those other things and crypto's part of it and it's this larger bundle, that's when I started thinking, okay, now, now this is real for me uh, and it's real for us as an industry mm -hmm. and we got to start having this conversation. Even if we don't really know exactly how it's going to impact us yet, I think we know enough to start making some some fairly decent guesses, right? I would say, mm -hmm. and, and um, kind of look forward to it. So, so maybe I'm getting way too far ahead of us here, but uh, maybe we need to talk a little bit more about what those different, like, what's it mean to be the Hulk and what's it mean to be uh, yeah. Iron yeah. Man? And uh... <laughs> yeah, so I, someone posted, so I'm just trying to read here. So guys, it is 6, 6 a.m. for me. So like my mm -hmm. eyes are still adjusting in my glasses. So uh, Don asked like, hmm, how's Web3 good for Google? 
So as I mentioned, the internet is Iron Man, right? So Google's not going to go away. It's just going to have to evolve into something different. Um, then we have like blockchain that I mentioned being Captain America. And so blockchain, we can start there, is uh, it's, a, it's a networking system, right? It's built on a distributed ledger. So information um, is added. It's to this ledger, it has to be verified and it's verified by individuals or individual machines or people that own these machines. And there's algorithms that will um, decide if the information that's being put out is correct. So some of the, which that means for like news, right? So we hear about fake news right now. Um, and so, um, with blockchain and using that technology, a lot of the news has to get verified before it makes it onto um, the blockchain and then is presented onto the internet. So because that's not implemented yet, we don't know what it's going to look like. Um, right. right. So we can only speculate right now as to like what that means, because I think that Web3 is still evolving and it's not something that's going to happen tomorrow. Like they're not, there's not a switch that someone's going to turn and they're going to be like, oh, you're on Web3 now, right? Um, it, this is going to be an evolution. Um, but I think that data ownership and um, verifiable content is a big thing with blockchain. And I think that's what's going to be a big change for the web and Web3. So you know, anyone that creates the content owns it. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, you know, and so Captain America is like, when you think about Captain America, right? Like he's like the do-gooder, he's like, you know, justice and all that other stuff. Um, so let's just see someone here put it as verica verification by what means. So verification is through a consensus. Um, so meaning not one single person says like, this is true, <laughs> right? Like, Myra is a millionaire. This is true because Myra said so, right? It's, it's, <laughs> it has to be verified. Um, uh, and it's verified through a consensus mechanism. There's a consensus, consensus algorithm. And so that information has to be true across specific criteria for it to then make it onto that blockchain. Um, and then if we talk about like NFTs, non-fungible tokens, we said NFTs are Thor. So Thor has like, you know, the hammer and Thor's like flowing here and like, you know, <laughs> fantastic. He's the, He's the God, right? So NFTs are about data ownership. So it's about owning creativity also. And it's right now we think about NFTs and people will be like, oh, NFTs, that's going to go away. Like non-fungible tokens, it's just a trend. I think what it is right now is like it's it's gaining traction. People are trying to figure out how do you use these NFTs for data ownership. Um, and so if you put it in the sense of like LMD, um, you know, Brent, you create a, a, a phenomenal course or learning experience um, and you put it out on blockchain that is then served up on the internet, um, you have ownership of that asset that you created, like your stamps on there. And so now you could actually sell that to other organizations through a licensing method. And so like, you know, if you think about product development, licensing and all that other stuff, there's like a lot there. Yeah, it is. And that's, that's the part that, uh, that I sort of jumped to first. I think that was my first, mm -hmm sort of mental model of how it's going to impact L and D and what we do. When I first heard about NFTs, I didn't quite yet understand mm -hmm. the technology behind it, but I understood the concept and what it meant. And so I immediately, the best thing I could relate it to was just like you said, a course and was, could, could very easily see how this is a great way to have and to understand that type of ownership and a course uh, or a learning uh, I, I don't want to say courses because I know that sets some people off. So it's like a, 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 a learning piece of content or a learning artifact of some sort can be turned into an NFT. And then I can either, like you said, license that out. Or if I'm understanding it correctly, it ends up being kind of like an Amway 
uh, product, right? Like, a, like if, if I sell it outright to somebody, the blockchain holds me still as the original creator and owner. And if they then sell it, I still get a, a little cut of that mm -hmm. sale. So as the, as the value of that, that piece of artwork or that course or that learning artifact uh, gains in value and more and more people want to buy it, everybody on the bottom end of it gets a little piece of that sale. Yes. That and, and ownership and ownership can be traced back to you. To me. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it's and it's solid and nobody can steal that. Nobody can change it. Nobody mm -hmm. can can make it different. And that's the part that was really interesting to me, because so many times people, you know, this person's stealing my content. And I, you know, I wrote a somebody stole my ebook and translated it into Chinese. And now it's on the black market in China and I'm not making any money from it and blah, blah, blah. Blockchain in essence, solves that problem. Yes. yes. A lot of people can still copy that digital asset mm -hmm. but the and, and use it separate from everything else, sure, but you are still identified legitimately as the owner within the legit world of the blockchain. Yeah, and so when you think about also from like a legal standpoint, right, so um, because ownership could be traced back to you, let's say a big corporation steals your stuff, you can then um, you have a legal footing because that ownership can be traced back to you. And so then you you're entitled to your royalties. So um, yeah, Mary, it's similar to Mary Kay too, right? So Amway, Mary Kay, Avon. Uh, oh, Avon, yeah, that's, that's the one I was thinking. That's the blockchain, right? <laughs> <laughs> or NFTs, right? NFTs are Mary Kay, Avon. Um, yeah, so. Uh, and there's, but there's the thing that I think people are missing in a lot of the conversations is the uh, the functionality piece of an NFT, right? I think a lot of people are just seeing all the hype around. Oh, I bought a little piece of art. I bought an avatar for my Twitter account, and is that it? Is that all that it is? And it's like, well, no, not really, because you can attach other stuff to owning that NFT. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's people selling um, coaching hours, you know, meet me, you know, or I'm doing a concert and all the concert tickets are gonna be NFTs and we're only gonna print a thousand of them or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think when you think about NFTs, you need to really think about like this creator economy that we're moving into. Um, which has a lot to do with cryptocurrency also, right? So um, it's not something that's going to go away. It's something that's like happening like right now. Um, it's just not, it's gaining that adoption and that creator yeah. economy because you have full countries that are using cryptocurrency as their either, you know, their currency. Um, and we are seeing now more organizations accepting cryptocurrency. So in this creator economy um, where cryptocurrency is gaining traction, um, you, there's a way for you as a creator to, to make money, right? And that, that we can talk about like the metaverse and all this buying digital assets in the metaverse and all that other stuff. Those are all NFTs. Um, and so um, it's kind of like the the final leg of like web three um, because Karima has yeah. a great analogy. You're adding to your superhero analogy. I love this to me. NFTs are Dr. Strange. I don't understand <laughs> <laughs> how it works. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Dr. Strange is like magic. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is in a controlled environment, like corporate one example, one for example, corporate one, for example, NFTs seem like a good idea because content is very much controlled. I can't read this, but it's open and it becomes a massive issue with digital artists having a lot of their work minted by third parties and takedown process. Okay. So uh, this is, uh, I can't read who wrote it, but that's a lot, right? So um, yeah. NFTs are about, and 
Web3 is about decentralization. We don't want controlled environments, right? Yeah. We're going to see a lot of these right. controlled environments um, evolving. Um, corporations uh, are going to have to start moving because the internet's changing, like with cloud technology, and we have like quantum computing that's you know starting to to gain traction. Also, um, a lot of data centers. When you think about like data centers, right? So like data centers used to be on premise things that corporations had and maintained, all that has moved to the cloud, right? So it is no longer centralized, it is decentralized. And so this evolution, it's falling into this whole kind of crux. And and we're not gonna see it just happen overnight. We're gonna start seeing, I, just keep your eyes out on everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. So Kim has an interesting question in the, in the, in the question panel, are, are learning NFTs the opposite of open educational resources, bracket OER? So, okay, are, pass that one by me again. My brain just sure. short yeah, no. with that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Kim's asking, are learning NFTs, would they be like the opposite then of uh, what, we, what we would have called open educational resources or OER? Thing. So the idea of, of making things um, and just putting them out there for other people to, to learn from. Maybe you made a YouTube video on how to do something, for example, and therefore it's 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 wide open, you know, for other people to use in that way. So yeah. is, are, are NFTs are an, an opposite of that, or or no, they're not an opposite of it, right? What an NFT gives you is ownership of that content. So I think it's a I think of it as a layer, yeah, right? There, yeah, there's yeah. all that open resources, open <clears throat> content that everybody's creating, everyone can still create. But then there's this layer that if you choose to put some of your content uh, at, in with that layer on top, you can. So that then, so that brings us into the Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> so decentralized applications. Um, right. So uh, with that open source, so open source. Um, soft, uh, software and applications and content were the first step in the direction of de decentralized um, ownership or, you know, ownerless apps, ownerless content. Um, and so uh, open source, you know, contributors are completely unpaid um, and they don't really benefit from um, like the software or the or the content that they um, have or that they offer um, with a decentralized application running on blockchain, um, it creates a sim uh, like a, a system of rules and it has an infrastructure um, that doesn't need a person to run it. So meaning that YouTube video or that you know application that you had will be similar to what we used to have in web one which was just like you know you got on you got your information you got off um so it's gonna it's i'm trying to figure out the best way to, to explain this um it just makes it's gonna make it easier for you to have ownership of your content even though it's open source and free and kind of protect that content from someone that would take that and try to profit from it, right? Because there's a lot of that where you can find content that's available for free um, and then someone takes that and they um, they sell it, that same content, like they rip off your content and they make, package it differently to make it something that they now sell. So um, with uh, cryptocurrency uh, tying uh kind of what's called a utility token to to all of that um you can utility tokenize. that's what i was thinking yeah yeah you word. can you can tokenize um that content right so then uh it's still free you can still offer it free of charge and all this other stuff but because there's this token attached to it that ownership um again ends up being a traceable and um it just changes the the way um, we operate, right? And so, I don't know. Like, think about Facebook and Google. Google both. They, you know, they've changed their names. <laughs> Facebook <laughs> is now Meta, right? Um, and Google is trying to play in this space also. Um, 
both trying to separate their corporations from like this other thing, this, you know, metaverse um, thing that's coming through. Um, I, I like and, the idea of something that seems to be catching a lot of traction these days too, that I think is part of web three, but it, it's the, the idea of federated content, right? Like instead of having one Facebook or one Twitter or one anything, any, any centralized communication network of sorts, everybody kind of has their own and you can choose who you connect to and they can choose who they connect to. So all of the different checks kind of hearkening back to the old days of everybody just having a blog and an RSS feed, right? And you could pick and choose how you got your content. It wasn't an algorithm deciding what you got to see for the day or anything like that. You got to pick and choose. You built your own basically structure with an RSS feed reader, which is why I still kind of <laughs> long for those days, you know? Um, but I think the, the idea of federated content, um, kind of takes us back there. And, and it's part of that ownership piece too, right? You you We get to take ownership again of mm -hmm. the content we create, how it gets put out to the world, and then also what content we bring into our world and mm -hmm. and, and the people we let into our world and whatnot. So I, yeah, I think one uh, it's got yeah, a dinosaur yeah. name. What's the name of that thing that I'm thinking of? It's uh, Mastodon. It's like a, Mastodon, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Mastodon servers. Yeah, that that's the thing that that seems to be getting the most traction. Yeah. And so I think one other issue that Web3 is going to potentially solve for us, and I don't know, like this is a, a huge pain point for me. I, I don't know if it's a huge pain point for you guys right now with Web2 is how many username and passwords do you all have? <laughs> <laughs> Like, let's, let's just bring it down to simple things that we can understand right now. Like, how many usernames and passwords do you have? You have a different username and password for Facebook, for Instagram, for Twitter, for your corporate email, for your personal email, for your LMS. website. Yeah, any, your LMS, <laughs> anything that you log into, right? Um, Web3 could potentially solve that because when you, because it's based on blockchain and, um, with Web3, um, you create an account, right? And you're issued a public key and a private key. And you'll be able to use just that public key and private key to log in anywhere. Your public key would be like a username. Your private key is like your password. Um, and it would allow you to get, it would allow you to navigate everything with just that one encrypted username and password. Um, so then you're not having to write username and passwords down and try to remember, I have an app on my phone where I'm like, how do I log into my bank? How do I log into like, you know, the airline to, to check in? How do I log into my hotel points? Um, it, you know, if we take it down to just like those simple pains, imagine just being able to log in with one credential and probably through a QR code. <laughs> You yeah. scan it onto a camera and it, <laughs> you're magically logged in. So, or just your face or your face. Yeah. Or your thumb or your <laughs> um, have you guys seen the, the new, the, the thing at Amazon, they have like the pay with your palm, palm pay. Uh, no. Yes. No. Yes. It's so cool. Um, I created a video about it. I think it was like two years ago. Um, is it at the you, Amazon stores? Yeah, at the right? Amazon stores right now, but it's going to be rolling out. And so Pompeii, um, it reads your hand and you can like, it associates your palm read with your payment. So. Interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I don't think things like implants and all that kind of stuff. I think that's a different kind of tech for a different conversation. Actually. <laughs> oh, <Brad. laughs> Well, it can be connected to it, but I don't want us to let's, get too outside the Yeah, no, no, no. Of... <laughs> so let's so let's just touch on that because I think it's interesting. So no implants, okay. please, right? So uh, because of this cryptocurrency, um, if you Google it, there's a guy that uh, implanted an NFC chip into his wrist. Um, and an NFC chip is just basically like a little reader. I have a couple here. Um, but uh, you basically can like load information onto it, like your cryptocurrency. 
private key and private public key. And so then you can just scan. So he, so because they're so small, he embedded it into his wrist. I do not recommend that to anyone. Right. <laughs> um, but like a lot of people are like, oh, how about I just tattoo like a QR code so then I can like do this? Or people talk about that simplicity of doing that. And I think we'll see some of that. Like it's not, you know, you know how they say like if you I'm a big fan of the Jetsons and anything that the Jetsons had in the in the cartoon show, a lot of that or technology we have right now. Um and so don't discard this implant stuff. I think, you know, I know that the Bible calls it the mark of the devil. I know that, you know, people are like, it's the rise of the machine and all this other stuff. But I mean, I personally do not want to get an implant, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's just get that straight right now. But there are people who are taking it to the extreme. What we call extreme right now is going to become normal in mm -hmm. about 10 years. We were just talking about how things evolve in 10 years. Yeah, yeah. I was, an eight, sure. I was an 18 year old part-time student working in a store and got cornered in the warehouse by a fellow who uh, spent several minutes ranting to me at that time that uh, computers were the rise of the devil and we would all end up with tattoos, uh, which was the market. It, so there are some, there are some things that never fade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some memes. Uh, it, it, as, I, as I'll emphasize, that was when I was 18 and I'm not 18 anymore. Um, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So mm -hmm. interesting yeah, stuff. Don, Don's thrown a, a, a William Gibson reference in Shades of William Gibson when he said the future is already here. He wasn't implying it was all good. Uh, <laughs> and, and the other half of uh, you know, the future is here. It's just not evenly distributed is the other half. I think, yes. of the, the William Gibson quote. Um, big William Gibson fan here. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. But think about the truth in those two statements. Yep. Yeah. Right. So Web3 about this whole not uh, not being the future being not evenly distributed right now. Like we live this. It's you know, mm -hmm. the future is not equally distributed. And so Web3 has the potential to equalize it's, you know, um, the Internet and resources. So it's I think it's an interesting play because when you think about um, like uh, you know it also i mean it does feel too like um like jan's mentioning in the chat it's neutral like money mm -hmm. depends on what you do with it but it certainly also sounds because of the money involved potentially you know for setting up some of these systems etc that there's a place where we may end up with just another the, yet another entity you know that is actually the controller of all this because they just you know they rolled it out and everybody you know bought in and now we're back to now we're back to having a, a Google or a Facebook that's in charge of all of this part of, you know, our 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 world. And then in, inequity, you know, comes back into play again. So lo yeah. lots of things to see what's going to happen. Yeah, like we can only predict so much. Right. But I think that I think of Web3. So I'm from Puerto Rico. And um, a few years ago, they wanted the governor of the island to like step down. So they protested for like three days until they got him out of office. So I think of Web3 as that protest group who is trying to bring down this government, you know, that is, or, you know, the centralized government that doesn't feel right for them. So think of like, the, so think about Web2 and the centralized um, uh, internet, like, uh, I don't know, like your, <laughs> like vegetables, right? Homegrown vegetables versus store-bought vegetables, right? With store-bought vegetables, there's like chemicals. It's vegetables, right? But it's packed with things you don't know about to preserve it. And with homegrown, you know exactly what's in it. So, um, you know, like the protesters are homegrown vegetables and government is like that store-bought vegetable or corporations are store-bought vegetables. And so I think the rise of homegrown vegetables is coming <laughs> uh, because think, we want purity, right? We want that purity of, of yeah. content. I, and I think that's why I hearken back to the glory days of the, the late 90s mm -hmm. uh, and the and the early 2000s uh, when it, it, there was, I mean, I was, I'll be honest, I was giddy about it back in those days because it just seemed so pure and 
and nice to be able to reach out and connect with other people, right? To have a blog and wikis were so amazingly open and free mm -hmm. and this ability for anybody and everybody to be able to edit and add stuff and to moderate each other and have this communal aspect. And it was just so, it felt so pure and honest and authentic. And then everything you know, once everybody saw it that, and they started thinking, well, let's make it really easy for everybody to do this and let's build that one central thing. Let's build that Facebook. Mm -hmm. Let's build that Twitter thing. Let's, <laughs> let's start building all of these centralized things that just make it easy so people don't have to manage their own, you know, WordPress blog and they don't have to install their own wiki and all, all this kind of stuff, you know, which at the time I remember is sounding great, right? Oh, cool. Somebody to handle this for us. And then it all kind of goes bad. And so now it kind of feels like, and that took a while, right? That probably took what, 10 years uh, for that transition to really start to happen. And so I, you're right. I think I, I, it really feels like right now really feels like the late nineties when people were first starting to uh, experiment with new versions of the web where people could communicate back and forth one that you know and and move and make it a little bit easier for people to mm -hmm. go from that hey this internet thing is just all about consuming content now it's also about consuming and creating and engaging with people and whatnot and now it's kind of the apple has gotten kind of rotten and everyone's going to growing their own apples now. Mm -hmm. So think about the whole influencer, like um, gig economy, right? And gig, like, that's all part of like driving towards this. Think of, I think about web three, like web one with new technologies, <laughs> right? Yeah, so it was, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, that's what I mean. It's like, it feels a lot, that excitement, that underground feel to it. It feels very punk. Right. It just, yeah. It's just got a very punk feel to it. You, you know what I did want to touch on and I, we're getting kind of close to our time, but I also think this has an impact on education. This is a little outside of our corporate instructional design stuff, but it, I have this weird feeling as we're talking about Web3 and how it impacts courses and learning artifacts and stuff like that, that it also could help save the craziness of the university system and public schooling and all that kind of stuff. What, what have you put yeah. any thought into that as well? Yeah, I have put a lot of thought into that because that is my realm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so uh, in 2016, I saw Jane McGonigal um, do a keynote at DevLearn and she's a futurist. She, she's mm -hmm. a director of gaming at the Institute for the Future. Um, and I was just telling Brett and Chris, I'm reading her book, Imaginable which is phenomenal she she's done some simulations she really talks about like future thinking and stuff like that i'm a big fan of her work um but she presented at devlearn this whole concept of edgy blocks um and edgy blocks is where i can teach brent a skill and he can demonstrate that skill and i uh, give him a verifiable credentials in the form of an edgy block um, and I get paid through edge of blocks. So there's currency in there. Um, and so I think that uh, right now there are some institutions like MIT um, worked with partnered with some other universities to create a blockchain network where they could issue um, blockchain backed degrees. So now the institution no longer owns that data the student owns their own data so they're they can self verify that credential um and so also you know if you look at the evolution of that the next step would be that as they as a student completes a lesson they could be issued some kind of token or block that they can then verify and create a non-traditional transcript I'm talking with Credley right now, um, Jaron Schmidt from Credley. He's amazing. We've had this conversation about non-traditional transcripts and how do we verify people's credentials, even if they didn't go to college, to help them create this transcript that, that they can use to show employers like their skills and competencies. That's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> right. But I think, yeah. That, that's actually, um, you know, in the early sort of phases of, of discussion about XAPI, for example, one of the use cases that was, was discussed often was that you as a learner would have your own storage of your of your of your credentials so that you weren't um, you did a safety training course and it's in your 
now it's currently the check mark is in your co current corporation's LMS, but you move mm -hmm. to another job and you've already done the safety course. Uh, you know, so now you, one of the ideas behind uh, one of the angles of using XAPI was that that would enable you as a learner to have your own storage of your credentials that you could then just show up in your next job and say, look, I've already got these things. No need to train me again to put me through mm -hmm. the same thing again, for you know, for example. Um, and yet that's that use case has, you know, over time faded um, yeah. away from discussions around XAPI. Um, but this could fix it. Web3 yeah. could be the thing. Yeah. There's potential in everything. I think it's just of how we look at, you know, look at things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of different companies too. Just just to, to touch on that too, uh, you know, with, and, with and Credly and other ones doing that as, kind as of I'm, open stuff. Mm -hmm. And as I'm thinking about, you know, how some of this stuff will end up affecting us, you know, in L and D, etc. The odds are we're probably going to find we're using tools or something like that, and the word blockchain isn't really, you know isn't part of the title, you know, but it's, it's the thing behind it, for example. So someone, you know, these things will have different faces, et cetera, um, or, you know, NFTs, but maybe that's actually, there's something else, but, but the NFT idea is the thing, you know, behind it. So mm -hmm. we're hearing, you know, certain kinds of phrases and certain kinds of things right now, but um, as those evolve, we may not even be formally re recognizing that they're actually like the operating system or, or something or the, yeah, yeah. you know, the core behind another tool that we end up, that we end up using. Um, I agree. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. What's well, kind of like um, RSS feeds? Uh, you know, nobody calls them RSS feeds anymore. Nobody. I mean, half the people in our chat probably don't even remember them or 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 know remember what it stands for or anything like that. But everybody still uses them today. If you if you listen to podcasts, it's the same thing, right? But it but it's just oh, I have a podcast. I have a podcast app. I subscribe to different podcasts. You're subscribing to an RSS feed. The tech may be yeah. different, but the concept, the idea, and everything is is all still the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I Duncan's agree. just Duncan's just mentioned in the chat. Blockchain is plumbing, and that, that's yeah. a, a, that's a that's three word a, summary of what just took me yeah. to, <laughs> eighty four <laughs> words to try to express. So. Yeah, and I you, think, Duncan. yeah, and I think that when you think about the internet, we always call it the wild, wild west, right? Like. And it's uh, www wild wild west I, and i think that yeah. with web3 we're going to start seeing a usenet kind of uh return to um, data ownership so it's gonna we're gonna see hopefully they'll call it like homesteads right like is that what they called it in the <laughs> west like homesteads so it's yeah. not it's like the wild wild west you're not homestead <laughs> So. Or, yeah, or wildcat builders, I think, is what uh, is currently happening out in my part of the wild, wild west. Oh. <laughs> Picking up on what Duncan said as a blockchain as plumbing, Jennifer has just tossed in the chat. Yeah, but who owns the plunger? Everyone does. Yeah. Uh, everyone we all have a plunger. plunger. <laughs> <laughs> you no longer have to call the front desk for a plunger. <laughs> and that's an excellent place for us to wrap things up a little bit here. Go ahead and drop your contact information into the chat there, Myra, so everyone can talk I to you. I will, too. And while Myra's doing that, I will mention that, of course, Domino... Yeah. Makers of Domino One are our sponsors. Brent and I both are members of the Domino team. It's Domino that makes all of that possible. So if there's an interest, um, you might want to check out. So we do have a free trial. Maybe Domino One can help you. We're not yet blockchain, but who knows where the future might take us. You never know. And also, don't forget to sign up for our LinkedIn group. We do have one of those. You can hang out with us there. You can ask us any questions there that you want and uh, find out more about what's going on here at idiotic for sure yeah thanks everybody for joining us this is a really cool conversation we're like looking into the crystal ball we're peering into the future exciting scary depends on i guess what happens huh indeed yeah. myra thank Dang. you so much for hanging out with us thank yeah. you for inviting me and uh can, i hope everyone has a great rest of the week you guys are amazing brett chris <laughs> as always you guys are fantastic. Oh, Myra, thanks always for joining Thank us. You. Hey, everybody, let's Thank dance you. on out of here, and we'll see you all again. Bye, folks. Here we go. There it is. Thank you very much. Adios, everybody. <laughs>